Hello everyone, in this video we are going to work on how to identify whether we deal with a linear, an exponential or a quadratic function and then we will write an equation that models what we have in the table. So for this we first need to identify what kind of function we are dealing with and if you don't know how to do so, looking at a table, please click the link at the top to watch the video that I recorded before uh, to decide whether you deal with a linear function, a quadratic function, or an exponential function. But long story short, we are going to subtract the y values. That's going to be the process. So, in here, uh, if we subtract these two numbers, negative 25 minus 32, it's like the y values are increasing by 7. So, this is positive 7. And then negative 18 minus negative 25 is positive 7 negative 11 minus negative 18 is positive 7 and negative 4 minus negative 11 is positive 7 so if all these differences are the same then you are dealing with a linear function that's our first conclusion like to decide if you have a linear you subtract them see if they're equal if so you deal with a linear so linear functions are in the form of y equals mx plus b, right? So that b value right here, my bad, that m value is the common difference from the table. What's the common difference for the y values of the y? It's all like plus 7. Add 7 to get to the next y value. So, 7 is the f slope, and then x plus b equals y. That's what I have now. Now, I need the value of m and b. So, I need to figure this out, which I just did, and then I need to figure this out. But how do I find the value of b? By picking one point from the table, one, one, one for the x, one for the y, and then plugging them in. We will solve the equation for b, and then we will take those m and b values and then plug them in over here. So, right now, I'll pick a line from the table, one of the rows, to plug in. Let's say this. By the way, I already know what the uh, y-intercept is going to be looking at the table. I will show you that once I actually figure it out because there's an easier way but it's not going to be applicable all the time that's why I'm not showing that one first so you pick one of the rows plug it in so negative 1 for x negative 11 for the y y is negative 11 y my x is negative 1 let's fix that okay negative 1 is the x and then plus b 7 times negative 1 is negative 7 drop down the rest and to get the b all by itself, you need to get rid of that negative 7 by doing its opposite, doing its inverse. So b equals negative 4. So it was on the table, anyways, it was right here. Because if it's asking for the y intercept, in general, the y intercept is the number that has a 0 for the x. So it's going to be like, on the coordinate plane, when we talk about the y-intercept, you're talking about that, that point when the line crosses. So and at that point, the x value is always 0. And if the x value is a 0 on a point, that's the y-intercept anyways. Like right here, the x value is 0. It's y-intercept that corresponds to that point is negative 4. But then again, it's not going to be available all the time because sometimes they're not going to give you zero on the x. So, which is why you need to pick one of the rows, plug in the x and y, and then get the b by itself. Now I have the b, it goes in there. I had the m right here, and that goes in here. So let's rewrite the equation. It was y equals mx plus b, right? m was 7, we figured it out up here because of the difference mx plus b you're gonna do plus negative 4 basically it's just subtract 4 
I don't want to put plus negative 4. So that would be uh, my answer. This one is M. This is B. So you got to figure the common difference for the slope out. And then you got to figure out the B, the y-intercept. Sometimes it is going to be readily available in the table. Sometimes you got to, in many occasions, you got to plug in the x and y value. Okay, 7x minus 4. Okay, linear question, linear equation took about 5 minutes, uh, 4 and a half, 5 minutes. Let's check this one out. Okay, we can do this one. This is not linear. Okay, the process is the same. Find the first differences. Negative 36 minus negative 25, that's negative 11. Negative 49 minus negative 36, that's negative 13. Negative 64 minus negative 49, that's negative 15. And then negative 81 minus negative 64, that's negative 17. Okay, now they're not all equal. That means you don't have a linear function in here. That's not linear. It's either quadratic or exponential. So if you deal with a quadratic, when you repeat this process, the numbers are going to be equal. Negative 13 minus negative 11 is negative 2. Negative 15 minus negative 13 is negative 2. Negative 17 minus negative 15 is negative 2. If you cannot subtract these without uh, a calculator, then use one. Okay? Use a calculator, subtract them. And one, it, once you see they're equal, after the second subtraction, second differences indicate a quadratic. So now we know that we are dealing with a quadratic function, and IXL wants us to model this table with this equation, y equals a x squared. Okay, now, uh, so all we do is figure out the a because y's and x's are going to stay the same all the time. Figure out what a equals by plugging in an ordered pair for x and y. So just pick one of the rows. Those are the smallest numbers. So they make more sense to me. So y is negative 25 looking at the table. So I'm plugging it in for the y equals a is unknown. And then I will do x squared. The x value from the table is 5. So left side is negative 25. Right side is a times 5 squared is 25. To get the a by itself, you need to do the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So basically, a equals to negative 1. That's all we needed. To write an equation in the form of y equals a times x squared. You can either put it in the parentheses or you can write it this way. Or you can just write it this way. I hope I excel accepts all of these as right answers because I'm going to use the last one. Okay, because that looks uh, simpler than the others. Negative x squared. I'm sure it'll accept the second one as the right answer. Probably it'll also accept the first one. I'm not sure about the last one. I just want to test it out. Okay. You're fine. You're going to be fine whether you put them in the parentheses or not. Whether you put that one or not, you will be fine. Okay. This right here. I'm not going to do this because this is quadratic. Let me see. 44. Yeah, that's quadratic. This is not exponential. I'm looking for an exponential. Let me just refresh the page. I'll do one exponential, then I'll be done. This one is quadratic. Okay, you're making this hard on me. I come on. Okay, I'll pause the video and then 
replay it once I have a quad, uh, an exponential. Okay, I got one. So uh, in here, I already see the multiplication pattern, so I don't want to subtract the numbers because 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 3 is 108. 108 times 3 is 324, and then when you multiply those numbers by 3, so that's what's going to happen. So when you realize a multiplicative multiplication pattern, then you know that you are dealing with an exponential function. So this right here tells you that you have an exponential function. And to find that number, all you have to do is divide one of the numbers by the other one, by the previous one. So start with the greater number, divide it by the smaller one, and then continue doing that and see if you are going to end up with the same number. When you test like two or three of them, you, you, you should be fine. If you see like times three, times three, at least twice, then you don't need to like check the rest. So let's start with rewriting the general form. For an exponential, it's y equals a times b to the power of x. So I need to find a and b by plugging in a y and x. And then whatever a and b I have, I will plug them back in. And then that's going to be my answer to the question. So the first thing that you need to notice is that the common ratio is the b value. That's the b. Okay? So you can just put it right back. So over here, the b is 3 to the power of x times a equals y. Now, to find the value of a, we cannot just extract it looking at the table or the common ratio. We need to solve an equation by plugging in an x and y value. So let's just choose the ones with the smallest numbers, like here. Plug in 1 for x, 12 for y. y equals 12 equals a times 3 to the power of x is 1. And then solve it for a. 3 to the first power is 3 times a equals 12. This is just a one-step linear equation. It was 3a, so you need to divide everything by 3 to get the a by itself. 12 over 3 is 4. Now we know what a equals. We already knew what b equals. So we will plug them in over here. And our final answer is going to look like a is 4. In the parentheses, I have the b value to the power of x. Again, in your final answer, you should always have y and x in this assignment. You're just trying to figure out m, b, and then a for the quadratic, a and b for the exponential. So it's going to be 4 times 3 to the power of x. So the one that takes the longest time is the linear. Quadratic is not going to take too much time. Exponential is not going to take too much time. But you will probably be more comfortable with the quadratic because you are more familiar with like quadratics than you are with exponentials. That's what happens in high school. So exponentials will take a little more while for you to get used to. But once you to get once you get used to plugging the numbers in, you're gonna be fine. All you do is like use the given form, plug in the uh, num uh, plug in one of the rows you have, like zero and five, and then try to figure out the other numbers. So that was all for this assignment. What we learned is identifying whether we deal with a linear quadratic or an exponential function by checking the common differences the first differences and the second differences or to see if there is any multiplication pattern like this times 3 and so on in which case you are dealing with an exponential and then you use the plug in one of the pairs like 0 and 5 for x and y and then find the a and b values b is right here again you will find the a and then plug those two numbers back in to have your final answer. So that was all. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in another video.